So the flip side of the imports not doing much is that the exports are actually killing it. Uh, um, the Big 12's only two ranked teams. Uh, Scott, if you see your mark walking by, we'll get his take on this. <laughs> yeah, I'll just pull him aside. He's, he's not doing anything. <laughs> uh, the, the two only two ranked teams are, of course, Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, obviously this time next year, the Sooners and Longhorns will be in the SEC. Again, I'm on record as saying that I think the Big 12 is going to be fine. Uh, you know, it's going to be good in 2024 and beyond. But, um, you know, at the same time, how much do you guys think that the Big 12 will miss Oklahoma and Texas? Well, I think you miss them, but on the other hand <laughs> – like I would tell their friends, be careful what you wish for. You know, yeah. it's, it's, uh, yeah, I've said that about a lot of coaches too that skip town, which since then they've had a few that do that. And then, you know, you go to some bigger leagues and you get a bigger payday, but, you know, you also get a very demanding fan base. Uh, ask Butch Jones how that went in Tennessee. And, uh, you know, we'll see what, what Luke Fickle does at Wisconsin and all. And plus there's cost of living factors and things, you know, Cincinnati is a fairly easy town to get around and you can go to a major town and it's going to cost you more money. So you're going to need whatever money you're getting, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 I think in the end, the, the four teams that, that, that came in, We'll, we'll turn it around. It's mm -hmm. just the, the law of averages. They were picked for a reason. Uh, the influx of money is dramatic. Uh, I think U UC only gets a uh, partial for the next two years, but that is like 18 million and 19 million, which uh, they're only getting about seven from the AAC. And then in year three, it kicks into the 30, 31 or whatever it is. And they're building stuff on campus and, and you know, adding a new uh, indoor uh, practice they did have like a bubble type thing now they're adding an, an indoor performance center and then a separate adjacent uh nutrition center so two buildings going where the uh the old so-called bubble was um so and a lot of that when they bring kids in they have to show them hey we got some cranes going on here but this is this is what it's going to look like eventually so i think you know the other schools are probably doing the same thing so I, it, it's already a great basketball league. I, I think it'll be fine football wise because those teams that all came in all had some measure of success uh, before in, in, in football. They, they were at the top of their leagues, but that's it. On the other end of it, that's one of the things that's hurting. I think Satterfield now he is playing in the big 12. It's like, maybe if you're in the AAC, they're not a two and four. Maybe they, they sneak out a few of these wins and people do have unrealistic expectations because I can go back in history and tell you some of the coaches that in their first year didn't do well, Butch Jones, four and eight, Luke Pickle, first year, four and eight, probably should have been one and 11. It was, it was dreadful. And then the next year they, they turn it around. Um, I, I, I don't know. Any Anyone on a new job, it's like everyone has this uh, drive through window mentality of I, I want it now, I want it, it has to be perfect. It's like that's not the way life works. You know, right. it's absolutely it's, it peaks, peaks and valleys. So, Zach, you've kind of been banging the drum for the Longhorns all year, uh, talking about how good they were. How much How much is the Big 12 going to miss, you know, OU in Texas? I, I think they'll miss the eyeballs that obviously Texas and OU bring to the to the conference. I, you know, looking analytically, the most read stories were during Texas week for me. But, uh, you know, I, I think in the long run, I, I mean, I, I don't honestly know how much the Big 12 is going to miss from a competitive standpoint, how much we're going to miss them. I think that maybe a little parody is is good, right, where it's not just Oklahoma winning it year after year and Texas are they back asking that question year after year now that SEC can deal with that? So now we kind of get different colors and different teams and different personalities coming out. So, um, And then we've already mentioned the basketball side of things. It's just going to be both men and women. It's just going to be, especially with Arizona and Colorado coming in later, like just going to be elite. So, I, I, you know, you know, yeah, right now, this year, you know, yes, it's up in arms. Ask your mark all the questions about having the two best teams leave. But I think in the long run, I think it's going to be it's going to be just fine. 
Yeah, obviously they are two humongous brand names in college football. I mean, they are historic programs, and um, the Big 12 clearly did not want to lose them. Bob Bowlesby was certainly caught off guard by that announcement when it came down a couple summers back. <laughs> um, I'm going to miss it from the standpoint of uh, – you know, rivalries and such for Baylor. It's, uh, you know, Tex Baylor fans love to beat Texas. They love to beat A&M in anything. It could be checkers, you know, I mean, uh, and so that part of it is going to be missed. These are, uh, Baylor and Texas have played, what did we say, Zach, 119, 113 times. I mean, uh, so, you know, that's going to be sad. Uh, I, I still run into old timers all the time in Waco who say, uh, man, I miss the Southwest Conference, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I think, you know, from a rivalry standpoint, it'll be missed. And I agree, Zach, that, I mean, they those two teams do bring a lot of eyeballs to the league. But it is going to create a very wide-open competitive league, I think. 